Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest, and her name is Jennifer Carrier. Now, she's here, but before we begin, I just want to do a real quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency who really focuses on helping small businesses grow into large businesses. They don't want you to get scammed by those big marketing companies. So their goal is to help those startup businesses grow and become the businesses that they are are deserving of and that they were meant to become. So check out dmaworld.com and they are great marketing consultants and they want you to come visit them so they can help you grow into your dream uh, uh, position. So thanks so much for having you, having dmaworld.com uh, uh, sponsor our show. And I'd like to get right on to talking to Jennifer. Jennifer, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Uh, I'm really excited. So why, before, I'm going to let you just, you know, tell everybody about yourself and what you do, because this is really exciting. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, so grew up in the suburbs, you know, sort of a traditional, you know, um, uh, you know, path. I thought I was going to become an engineer. Um, I actually did briefly become an engineer. I thought I was going to um, do my, you know, schooling and graduate and have a normal nine to five, um, you know, until I retired. Uh, I ended up deciding the first go round to major in French and communications instead of engineering. So um, my first career out of college was at a nonprofit, um, as a cultural uh, center, a, a French cultural and education center called the Alliance Francaise. And I worked my way up to director, um, enjoyed that a good bit, but regretted not uh, completing an engineering degree. So I ended up going back to a different college to take more classes and ended up getting uh, hired at the Corps of Engineers um, in the civil engineering department. Uh, thought I was all set at that point, um, had a nice eight to four schedule, 15 minutes from the house in my hometown with all my friends. Um, got a random call, I believe it was actually a text from an actor friend of mine uh, who was working on a TV show that was shooting in Louisiana. Of course, we have uh, nice tax incentives for film and television in Louisiana. He said, we're in a bind. We need someone who is approximately your size and complexion. Can you bail um, at work and come to set and fill in um, and help us out with a stand-in position? So my boss was really cool about it and I went ahead and did it. Uh, those guys invited me back um, to complete uh, the episode standing in for a female actor. And then they asked me to come back the next episode for someone else. And so long story short is at the Corps of Engineers, I had an opportunity to freeze my work status without penalty. So I could freeze it for up to six months. And right. lo and behold, that is what I ended up doing um, because I, I was able to. So I took advantage of that. As we were, I was working on the TV show happily. As we were closing in on the six month period, my boss uh, texted me and said, are you planning on coming back? Cause it kind of doesn't seem like you are, you haven't been in touch. And I said, Jean, actually, I don't think I am. And I think I ought to go ahead and resign. So, um, you know, they were very cool about it. Um, they knew that I was, you know, just following something that felt right because it really was, it was just electric um, and just magic working on set. And I knew that that was a direction that I had to explore. I couldn't forget about it. Um, so I resigned from the Corps of Engineers and uh, pretty much uh, promptly upon resigning was hit with the uh, writer strike of 2007 where all work shut down. So all mm -hmm. film and TV work shut down. So um, went straight from, you know, one safe, secure career into the entertainment industry and into a strike. So I went to Bourbon Street and started bartending, even though I had no bartending skills. I just walked up and got actually not one, but two jobs and took the one that seemed like it was more fun, which it ultimately very much was figured out <laughs> and on the fly. Um, so so that was incredible. Um and as all, you know, Hollywood strikes do, the the strike ended. And um, as a matter of fact, the fact that there was a strike um, happening while I was entering, you know, first dipping my toe into the entertainment industry benefited my career enormously. Um, it mm -hmm. benefited everyone, frankly, because there was just this avalanche of work, I mean, for years. So I got really, really, really good. I was working like crazy, just, you know, puzzle piecing in every single day on set that I could. I was drawn to the um, amazing script supervisor role, which I never would have even known about had I not um, 
become a camera assistant first. And a camera assistant said to me, you know, I really think your personality um, and just sort of your qualities that would lend themselves well to script supervising. And I'm like, what on earth is a script supervisor? And he was like, let me come introduce you to someone. So um, and then he brought me over to uh, meet the script supervisor who ultimately became my script supervising mentor, um, taught me everything I needed to know and got me into the industry and got me jobs. So I'll never, ever be able to thank that man enough. I ended up repaying him by having him stay um, in my house for free because he lived, his family was based in another state. Um, so he got to live rent free at my place for a couple of years, which was my way of, you know, thanking him for um, the great gift of training me uh, and getting me into script supervising. Um, and then it's just been an amazing, um, you know, a, a career since then. I mean, you know, a joyful career is what I mean to say. Right. So nonst I love working. I love being busy and there's no um, better position on set to stay really, really busy and just always be, you know, pro solving problems, you know, and just, um, just getting into the, the mix with the, with the director and the actors and all the people who are like concentrating all day long. So yeah. um, that's how I got into it. Yeah. Now, for people who don't know what a script supervisor is, can you tell people a little bit more in depth about what it's about? Absolutely. So I have my own definition of what a script supervisor is. This is not what you're going to find online, but this is what I know to be true. A script supervisor is a mini director, mini producer, actor wingman, screenwriter representative, and editor advocate all rolled into one amazing film job. Okay, so we literally, we truly tie together all of the, the work of those other key players. Um, so I am a foot away from the director all day long, anticipating getting ahead of the director even. So I have to stay a few steps ahead of the director. Um, so I, you know, they're gonna turn to me and ask me, are we in the right, you know, context? Are we coming in with the right previous circumstances? Do we know where we're going? Um, does this all fit where it's supposed to be? Um, have we gotten all the coverage in this, that, or the other direction? Um, do we have, is everything matching? Do we have sufficient X, Y, or Z? So very much thinking like a director, running point for the producer, truly, um, you know, getting ahead of miscommunications, getting ahead of mismatches, um, just basically talking to all of my departments and actors about, um, you know, how to shoot things correctly without, you know, calling in the big guns, the producer to get involved. Yeah. So that might look like, um, you know, if we have something that's changing around and I've just heard about it from the director and AD, the assistant director talking about it, I might zip over to the costume person on set and say, FYI, they're pulling up that scene that we were going to shoot tomorrow because we have rain coming, but I know that that costume is still at the dry cleaners because the customer and I talked about it this morning. So yeah. just you want to let her, him know, whatever, something like that. Or it might just be something simple like, um, you know, zipping over to a prop person and saying, you know, we I'm noticing that this prop that you've built is starting to fall apart, starting not to match. Do you have another, you know, and it's just, you know, made up example, um, but constantly, constantly making sure everything on set matches and will cut together from angle to angle. You know, it takes hours or sometimes days to shoot a scene and everything has to be consistent. So making sure I'm helping support all of my other departments for consistency. Um, of course, I have to represent the screenwriter, make sure the script is, you know, the scene that we're telling is being told as intended by them. Um, sometimes we have misinterpretations on set. I am the person who is the story authority in lieu of the screenwriter. If the screenwriter is on set, which sometimes we do have the benefit of having the screenwriter on set, that's great. I get to, you know, work even more closely with them and get to, you know, what they truly want in each, um, you know, in the storytelling of each scene. But oftentimes we don't have the benefit of having the screenwriter on set. And then right. lastly, I'm representing the editor on set. So if they could, you know, have the benefit of being on set, they'd be creating the roadmap that matches exactly what the director wants for the cut but they don't have the benefit of being on set. They are in, you know, they are cutting dailies and editings in another location. Oftentimes they're in another state. I mean, I've had so many hundreds of editors that I've never physically met. I'm just, you know, interacted with them on the phone and by email. Um, so I have to give them the perfect roadmap. So, you know, the greatest compliment I can receive from an editor is to uh, hear from them after they've done a rough cut and shown it to the director. If they, say to me, I showed the director the rough cut and they said, it's perfect, just tighten it up or it's fabulous, just X, Y, or Z. That means I've done my job because I gave them exactly what the director wanted without right. me being here. So that's, so we do all of those things and there's truly just never a dull moment as a script supervisor, so. 
Wow, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. I'm really impressed. And you know, was this? Did you even hear about this type of position before you even started? This is kind of like it seems like it was just something that you didn't even know about that kind of landed in your lap. It truly landed in my lap. I was just lucky. Um, it's really not touched on in film schools. Um, people, even people in the industry hardly know how much opportunity is just hiding in that position um, because it puts you in the inner circle with the director, producer, actors, you know, representing the screenwriter and editor from your very first day. Um, right. So, you know, it's it's one of those things I'm kind of like, shouting it from the rooftops. I'm trying to tell people this is a hidden gem. It is an opportunity hiding in plain sight that everyone's going to film school to become a director, to become a screenwriter, to become a director of photography, um, to, you know, to act. Uh, this will give you all of those contacts. It'll give you all of those professional relationships in a business that's built upon relationships. So it is um, like a fast track to the inner circle. So, you know, I train people in this now because I'm obsessed with it. And we're seeing remarkably fast results. I mean, people who, you know, they've done like a couple of short films, you know, under my guidance or whatever, and then they go get their first, say, low budget feature or something. Um, and they walk away with a producer credit. Or they walk away with the producers saying, what can you pitch to us? We want to keep working together. Let's have a pitch meeting, you know, and then they get to go pitch their own work to them. So right. um, one, of, one of them has already done um, a, uh, a, a a sort of a spec version of her Christmas uh, feature film that this production company that hired her as a script supervisor back in the spring um, is yeah. going to hire her to do next year as a feature. So it's, it's really, really exciting to see how much opportunity there is in this position. Wow, because I worked in the entertainment um, industry and I didn't even know about that position. So, wow. Nobody thinks of it. Were you, no. were you in front of the camera? I was, I was behind the scenes. So I was really? the person okay. that put all the help put the show together, kind of like, you know, you know behind, yeah, to coordinate yeah. the show, put everything together. Wow, I, I never even heard about that. That's oh amazing. Gosh. You should look into it. I'm telling you, like, it's really, it's just a hidden gem. And there's just never a dull moment. I mean, I'm literally sharing a brain with the director all day and getting to work with actors on, you know, matching their performance and making sure their performances are usable in the edit, you know, talking character choices and previous circumstances and where we're going, you know, it's just, I'm in the story and um, I'm in the, I'm right in the center of the filmmaking all day. So it's really cool. That sounds very cool. That's very exciting. Now, is this is this something that you travel consistently? And is it, does it require a lot of traveling? It doesn't require travel, but there is the possibility of travel if you want to. So, you know, I've decided on, in certain instances, I have deliberately taken work out of town just to go see a new town. You know, it's like paid yeah. vacation. Um, so, you know, I had a chance to go to Boston for a long time. Um, I was also offered something in L.A. and was, you know, I would have had to move there. I was going I was planning to move to L.A. I was already talking with the union. Um, it was a requirement to do this ABC show. And then I took the Boston gig instead because I've not spent time in New England or I had not at that point um, yeah. ended up falling in love with New England um, so can't wait to get back um, so yeah I, I've oftentimes decided to work at home just to be closer to family and I've also frequently decided to take gigs out of town for paid vacations so <laughs> that's what I call it you know because it's like it's on the company's dime you know I mean they're funding on the travel you're getting the per diem and the car and the housing and the you know it's just like what what's not to like about it so um yeah, it's, it's been very, very exciting. Wow, that sounds very exciting. Now, you said that this is very easy for people to actually dab into if they're interested, and you actually created like a workshop for it. Can you tell us a little about that? So I uh, I did, to because I'm really trying to spread the message, I just did a free overview workshop that I recorded, and then I created all of this crazy sort of fun B-roll, and I, you know, I did these animated explainer videos um, to try to you know, to break down tricky concepts and make it really digestible. So I, yeah. edited, I mean, I edited it down like really, really tightly. So it's like 51 minutes and it just flies by. And then I did use some of my um, wonderful clients who just, you know, had a early, you know, amazing success 
do case studies, and then I've peppered those throughout as well. So people can really see what the opportunity is and how you start, you know? So the goal is to, to share it with people. This is what it is. This is the opportunity that exists. And here's how you start. If you're interested, you should go for it. So um, yeah, so it's it's a, you know, super um, quick and, um, and fun and densely packed with information workshop that's just available for anybody who wants it. So totally free. Wow. So maybe you could help people understand because, you know, people might think, wow, you know, that sounds really excited, but, you know, I, I don't think I could do it. I don't even know how, like, what would you tell those people? Like, how would you guide them or give, you know, maybe some tips that could like lead them into the right direction and, you know, help them actually get started or, you know, and figure out a way to, to act, actually get into it. This is they people absolutely, absolutely should just learn just enough to get through, say, one day on a volunteer project, you know, like an indie filmmaker in your town or something like one of my first, my very first experience was um, during the 48 hour film fest. Okay, so my buddy actually the same buddy that got me into television in the very, very beginning when he asked me to come be a stand and he um, was shooting, he was running his own 48 hour film fest team. He brought me on as the assistant director and the script supervisor. And there's a lot of overlap in the assistant director and the script supervisor's um, interests anyway, you know, efficiency and, and shooting things correctly the first time and so forth. So it made right. sense to do both jobs and it worked out really well. I knew just enough to get through that day as a script supervisor. And then I went and doubled down on it um, with a local um, actress, um, a, a television actress who funded her own feature film, which we actually shot over the course of one weekend. Um, so no, I guess it, it would have been a short film, but a longer short film. Yeah. Um, and I had the opportunity to practice it again there. And then the key grip of all people on that second volunteer job said, you are talented. There is a low budget feature shooting in Thibodeau, Louisiana. I just got hired. You need to go apply. And he set me up with an interview with the director, the key grip. And um, I drove down there and got that first feature film. So that was my first paid feature film. It was actually good money. Um, that was my first experience going down and getting, you know, housing and car and, you know, all the rest of it. So it was, again, like a paid vacation and also got to learn how to do the job really well, just through practice. So I would encourage people learn just enough to get onto a short film set and just practice it. The stakes are low in that setting. You know, you're, you're helping, you're adding value to their set, but you're also getting your mistakes out of the way in a lower stakes environment and, um, and figuring out your workflow, you know? And then at the same time, you're meeting all of these other contacts. Inevitably, even on short, you know, volunteer projects, there's going to be, there are going to be people who will also do it professionally, who are just volunteering to meet people, to practice and to make art. So every single volunteer gig that you do will lead via the contacts to paid work. And so I really try to drive that home to my, to my students and my clients um, that uh, you just volunteering in the role will lead to paid work in the role. And that's when it gets really rewarding. Now, do you need to find connections or how do you get into it? Like, where would you go to look? Like, how would a person who's interested in doing this and wants to get started, do they need to really know somebody in the field? Do they have to like, you know, or do they go to some, somewhere specific to try to find out, you know, because some people will go look for jobs on a certain website. Like, what do you do when you're, if you want to, you know, if you want to do something like this, like, where do you go? So I, I have found um, after seeing, you know, I've training, trained over 200 people in the role, um, the job boards, you can apply to these big, massive, you know, job postings on job boards, but those more often than not do not lead to the results that we see. The, the most, the more often my people get their jobs from their connections. So just start, even starting from zero, you know, I knew a guy from being a, a fan of the theater, okay? He was a theater actor and then he became a TV actor. Um, yeah. So he was a high school friend who brought me into it because I was the right size and complexion and could walk and get, could get onto set that day because I could take off work. Um, yeah. If you know no one now, you will know someone simply by talking to everyone. You know, who, who knows anyone in film? You know, who's making a film? You can get into social media groups, you know, filmmaking groups in your area. Um, there are, of course, script supervisor groups online. Uh, it does not take long to meet people who are making films in the market in which you want to work. You can even go to your states. There might be a film commission in your state. You know, there are, most of the states in the U.S. have 
film and TV tax incentives. Um, there are also film and TV tax incentives all over the globe. So this applies to people outside the US as well. Um, you can call your state film commission or you, I would really just recommend starting with your friends and just get into one or two filmmaking groups in your desired market. And it will not take long. Start posting saying, I'm interested in becoming a script supervisor. Who's got something? I'll totally volunteer my time. Um, I have some idea of how to do it and I'll bring a lot of value to your set and save you time both on set and in post, you know, in post-production. So truly, I mean, I started from zero and everyone else I've trained has started from zero. Many people have had that I've trained who are now successfully doing it had zero background in film and TV. So, oh, wow. Like, zero. Yes, literally. Like what am I? I, I mean, I, I feel like I have like certain ones that are just, they, to me, they're like famous, you know, um, graduates of my program. They're so successful. Um, you know, number of people who are directing and screenwriting and early, early success. Um, but one of my star, you know, students um, was in marketing and she didn't know what a script supervisor was, like didn't know what the term meant. Um, this right. was like eight months ago, she didn't know what it was, you know, and now she's screenwriting for a production company. So it's just one of those positions that it's it's so in demand because yeah. so little awareness of it. Right. Competing for the few qualified people, like in every single market. I mean, I see it all across the US. We're competing for the same few people who aren't available. Um, so there, there are job opportunities to be had. And then of course, you know, more opportunities beyond that. So wow. That's how you start. Yeah. <laughs> so is this something that you always had a passion for? Or is this something that just kind of just fell right into your lap, like we were saying before, and and you just loved it when you tried it? It clicked. So I was like bouncing around the various departments. You know, I had I, by that by the time I found out what a script supervisor was, I was already in the camera union. I was in local six hundred. So I okay. had tried um, director's assistant, producer's assistant, costumes, art department. Um, what else? That's all that comes to mind right now. But I had made my, I worked my way into the camera department and the unions so of paying union dues and, you know, set for life. Camera is a great, you know, um, department to be in. I loved working with all my camera, you know, bros yeah. and sisters and stuff. It was great community. But this one camera assistant was like, you see that guy over there, you know, like he's doing something that I think you would really excel at. And he, and I, mean, I, I thought the guy, you know, who was the script supervisor who became my future mentor, I thought he was just a director's assistant or maybe a, like a mini, you know, a producer or something. And it's like, yeah. well, sure. He was a mini producer because he was a script supervisor, but that term meant nothing to me. So yeah. um, I truly learned completely from scratch from him. Um, and it was just the best decision. And I'm so grateful to the fellow Alan, um, the camera assistant who introduced me to him. So Wow, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. So how many years have you been doing this for? So I got into it in 2008. So we're 15 years. Yeah. And wow. then um, yeah, I've done an extraordinary number of shoots um, because I and I, I like to be very busy. I cannot stand sitting still. So yeah. I gravitated towards fast paced television and then fell in with a studio that I stayed, you know, I mean, 10 years, you know, going strong, um, where we just shot an, ex an extraordinary number of pages per day. So very, very, very fast paced shooting, you know, almost like they, you know, say like the Bollywood shoots are like ridiculous amount, you know, ridiculous numbers of pages a day. That's yeah. what, we, what we do there. And um, it, I got really, really, really good and efficient and fast. So um, that you know, allowed me to work thousands of episodes of television as a script supervisor, got offered a producer job at that studio without even asking because I was already basically doing producer work. And that, of course, ended up being financially very rewarding um, simply because I was a great script supervisor. So the other thing about working in fast paced television is that it, it caused me to make a to create a system that cut all the fat and truly got straight to results. I mean, impossibly difficult shoots, some would say, you know, block shooting, yeah. block shooting 150 pages a day from 22 different episodes of a series and not missing a beat. That's the amount of pressure that was on me. So I rose yeah. to the challenge and create, I have no memory, by the way, I have like a, a leaky, like, you know, I, I mean, I, I can't remember what day of the week it is. I barely know what month we're in. So it's nothing to do with having a strong memory. I have the opposite of a strong memory, but yeah. what I because I had to was a you know a watertight system for getting yeah. everything right even when shooting in a really chaotic um high speed environment so wow 
that's what I, that's, you know, it's how I, uh, I apply the same speed to training future script supervisors. So it's like truly like a, it can be a two day turnaround with the system that I use. And then I mentor them once they're on set, they literally like get my phone number so they can text and call from set, which I'm doing this seven days a week now. And it's wow. not a problem. Like I literally, that's what I'm here for. We're getting people through um, any challenge that they encounter on set so that they're performing like a rock star from their first day. So then of course that leads to repeat hiring and then, you know, greater opportunities. So it's so, so, so much fun. We're a small little community, you know, it's, it's, a little over 200 people now um, that I've trained so and put into the workforce. So it's very, very fun. Wow. So if someone wants to train with you, what do they, where do they go and what, what do they do to, to start training with you? They can just go to my website, scriptsupervisorceo.com. Right on the homepage, you can click, you know, let me see the free workshop. And it's 51 minutes flies by, is so full of information. You will know with beyond a shadow of a doubt whether you want to try it or not. Um, and from there, you can train, again, in as little as two intense days, or you can stretch it out. So um, I made it really flexible. It used to be that I only trained people live online, so they would have to show up and be there. If You know, I had people who would have to, like, miss you know, afternoon two, you know, of the two day workshop, yeah. and then they would have, a, they would have a big hole. So I changed that. So now it's totally flexible. So you can train at whatever pace works for you. I do love to see people do it intensely and just get, you know, just be on the other side of the two day training and push them onto set. I love to see people do that, but some people simply don't have the time right now, but you can yeah. always, you know, space it out and jump in and complete it when you're ready. So Wow, that sounds really exciting. So when when people complete this training, like are now is is the goal to get them really well educated and ready for what's entailed in you know in their future is is it to give them the knowledge, the confidence and to kind of get give them what they need in order to be able to be successful in that field? Exactly that. So one of the things that I see um you know people who learn possibly from other, you know, uh, mentors or something. Uh, I've had people come to me and say, you know, I, I decided to invest in mentorship with this person in LA, for example. And they told me that it was going to be two years minimum of just intense, intense studying. And that I basically was going to need a PhD in script supervising before ever working. And I'm like, wow. okay, I'm gonna be working in two days, you know, and that's what we did. So it's, it's truly, it's overcoming the limiting beliefs. It's overcoming the idea that this is unattainable. It's overcoming the idea that this is the hardest job in film and TV. Um, it, I have a system that cuts all the fat and gets straight to the results. And I shove you onto set and every single one of them comes back and tells me, they all said I was the best script supervisor they've ever worked with. And I'm like, I know. I know. I hear it all the time. I know you are, you know, I know you learn the right way. Yeah. You started, you know, two days ago, you know, and then you got a, a gig on set and now you're being asked back for, you know, a feature film or whatever. So it's just, it's, it basically completely, you know, flips, you know, the old way of thinking on its head. Like this is about getting you to work now, not someday or never. So right. It's really, really important to me to um, overcome the limiting belief and just get people working. And then as soon as they do it and they get all that amazing feedback, they're like, dang, I didn't know it was going to be this good, this fast. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, really, I'm, I'm proud of what they're doing and I'm proud of it um, just in, in general. Yeah. So people can actually make a sustainable amount of income so they could live a very comfortable life doing this. Not only that, I mean, I made started making so much more than I did as an engineer. Um, pretty, I mean, like one year into it, you know, I was like, oh, wow, this is definitely the right move. Um, but not only that, it can lead to, you know, getting your, you can get your own creative work seen. So you can yeah. like fund your own independent filmmaking, or you can fund, you know, a few months of just going to Mexico and writing, you know, because you just did, you know, a three or a four or five month gig, you can kind of choose your own schedule. You know, I tell some of my people who are not ready to leave their nine to fives because they're, you know, they just feel secure and they like their benefits or whatever. And I say, well, then don't leave your nine to five, you know, go ahead and just pick up second unit days, you know, or pick up shorts. Um, you know, it just, just make it work with your existing schedule. There's no one size fits all. It's much more customizable than people realize. Um, right. so I have people who are still working their nine to fives. One of them, the one who, um, was uh, commissioned to write and then direct her own Christmas movie um, based yeah. on 
very first gig from earlier this year, she still got her nine to five and she's already directed, um, you know, the, the uh, spec version of the feature film and that's on the schedule for next year. So uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's much more flexible than people realize. I just had a mentorship meeting with a number of my people last night and uh, my woman in Maui was saying, you know, I have this really cool work that's kind of calling my name, but I don't want to, you know, walk away from script supervising. I feel like it's one or the other. And I'm like, Andrea, it's not one or the other. Do what you want to do. You want to do this other work, take it. This job, these skills, this industry is going to be here for you. You know, and everyone's like in the meetings nodding their heads. You know, I'm saying there are a lot of indie filmmakers who that they themselves have nine to fives and they shoot a feature film on the weekends spaced out over six weekends or something, or, you know, more like maybe eight weekends. Um, so it's truly, truly, the industry is never going away. The need for this position is clearly never going away. The need is actually getting more intense, intensified every year. There are just not, there's not enough awareness of the role. Um, so I say to people, you know, don't like, just put all of the negativity out of your mind, you know, like this, this is here yeah. for you it's, and it's going to be here for you. So learn it and have it in your back pocket. If you don't want to use it today, it yeah. will be for you whenever you're ready. Oh, that's amazing. That sounds amazing. Very exciting. Also, it is I'm so proud of them. And it seems like what makes it exciting also is that it doesn't get boring because you constantly are doing new projects. So you're constantly meeting people, you're constantly doing different projects. And so your mind, your creative uh, wheel is constantly turning. So someone that has a creative creative niche about them, this is like a perfect opportunity for them to actually, you know, use it and really shine. It truly is. The, I mean, it's an incredible variety, you know, like, I mean, I've met, I've met thousands of actors, you know, I've worked with thousands of actors at this point. And, you know, the thing about working with actors is, you know, they have to maintain their creative, you know, like they have to have their own space to be creative and you know, they're bearing their souls, you know, in front of all of us and on camera. And I have to work closely with them, getting them to do sometimes mechanical things like matching their performance to a, a wide master that we have to anchor, you know, all the matching to. So there's this whole like psychology and, you know, like, you know, relationship that we have to build with the actors to make them feel safe with us so that we can talk to them about matching performances or other sort of technical details or possibly getting into, you know, story context and where we are and where we're going. Um, so you have to create relationships along the way. So, you know, it's like you're using your psychology and your communication skills to make the project a success, especially when it comes to actors, you know, and also just other department heads, you know, like I might have to, um, you know, invite a department head, like a hair person or a prop person to see things my way and see it quickly because I know that we have a mismatch, but they don't see it that way. So I have to kind of spin it in a way that will make them see that we really don't have matching or something. So there's, there's psychology, there's communication skills, there's, um, you know, problem solving every minute of the day. It's like, what can I solve next? What problem can I get ahead of and solve before it happens? You know, um, wow. and then of course you're rewarded so much by the producers because they see what you're doing. They see that you're keeping us on track, you know? Um, yeah. And that's what my students just, they hear the same thing over and over. You know, I was just emailing with um, one of my women in DC who just found out she's pregnant and she's going out to LA to shoot. And um, she was just, we were kind of debriefing by email and we're going to meet up via Zoom as well, but we were debriefing by email and she said, uh, you know, the producer told me I saved the show because we were way, way, way behind. And I offered um, a creative, you know, solution, you know, some, some cuts and some changes and things. And, you know, the exact quote, I mean, I have it in you know, my email, she was saying, the producer said, yeah. thanks to you, we shot, we finished, we finished the film on time and under budget and, you know, shot everything correctly. So, I mean, it was something, you know, something even a little bit better than that. I'm just kind of recalling yeah. it. But, you know, it's just the same thing over and over. You're, you're a mini producer, you're a mini director, you're an actor wingman, you're a screenwriter representative, you're an editor advocate. And that's just what you get to do all day. And it is so, so much fun. That's wonderful. That's so, very exciting. And so you can basically do this with TV. You can do this in the movie industry. You can, you know, this position's open for all different areas, probably reality TV shoot, shootings also. Yeah. Not, yeah, so the, the not unscripted. Um, it's a little bit of a different job because we're not as concerned with the matching. But you know, in every unscripted, there's a little bit of scripted, you know, element. Yeah, yeah. And then, mm -hmm. of course, 
commercials too, you know? Um, so, you know, commercial work is, is cool. Um, I do like the storytelling of narrative. So I like the, I like working in narrative best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Truly, um, you know, you're, you're a creator in, in a sense, you, you're a creative right. and also a technical person. You're, you're a producer and you're making sure that we're all, um, keep keeping everyone honest with the technical matching and so forth. So, yeah. Um, I get to put on, you know, my engineering hat, you know, my problem solving hat, and then my creative hat, you know, my love of theater and cinema. So, um, you know, the two get to, you know, I marry the two together and um, it's just so much fun. There's just truly never a dull moment. Wow. That sounds very exciting. Now, where can people get in touch with you again? If they want to get, try to you do your workshop or talk to you or ask questions, like where can they find you? So script supervisor, CEO.com. They can, they can um, message me directly from the site. I encourage them to go to the free workshop. Also, they can go to my Instagram and message me that way. And the free workshop is also um, in my bio, the link to the workshop. I mean, I just recorded it over the summer. Um, it's up to the minute. And um, I, I, 51 minutes, you're going to know if it's for you or not, you know, or if you want to pursue it more or not. Um, right. It, it's, yeah, I, I think it's a really, really um, efficient and, exciting way to learn about it because I've, I've deliberately made it fun and a little bit, you know, funny as well. So, yeah. packing, you know, education while entertaining at the same time. So that would be the best way to do it. Yeah. To go to my website or my Instagram and just um, look at the free workshop and you can message me directly from either of those platforms as well. And does it require you to be away from your house a lot? And you mentioned that you don't have to be if you don't want to be, but does it, do you end up traveling a lot or do you, could, you really have the choice? I deliberately chose just for fun, more distant higher gigs than local gigs. Now, of course, the first, the first three years though, actually that's not true because there was so much work in Louisiana where I'm from, from New Orleans. Um, and of course, um, Louisiana is one of many states with film and TV tax incentives. After yeah. that ended, you know, there were, there simply were not and anything close, anywhere close to enough people to do the job. So we're bringing in people from LA and New York like crazy. So that was one of the big things too. I am training workforce, you know, in, you know, to work locally in each of these tax incentive states. Um, yeah. so stayed book, book, booked um, the first three years. And I mean, I would do, you know, Monday to Friday on say a, a feature in Baton Rouge or Lafayette, you know, and then I would cram in like a second unit stunt day on a big studio film in New Orleans. So I'd be driving at night, you know, and just like packing in a six day in there, have a little rest on Sunday and travel back Sunday evening to, you know, central Louisiana or something. And I wow. I'm of my life. I didn't have to work that much. I wanted to work that much because it wasn't work. I was getting paid to just have an amazing time, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that's how it really snowballed for me and how I got really good, really fast. Again, thanks to the writer strike, you know, had that not happened, I might not have had that cascade, you know, or rather that um, tidal wave of work to just yeah. ride for years, you know? And then it wasn't long before other markets started calling because, you know, I was a standout, I guess, in the community, um, just in terms of work performance. And so, you know, other markets talk to each other, you know, when they're, you know, let's say Atlanta's like, we are completely out of people. We can't get anyone else um, from any other coast. You know, let's call our neighbors. Let's call Alabama. Let's call Florida. Let's call Louisiana, you know? And so it wasn't long before Atlanta started calling, of course, Atlanta's like Hollywood South. Um, yeah. And it just grew from there. Yeah. Wow. They're very exciting. Very exciting. Now, is there any tips that you'd like or anything that you'd like to close it off with? Any suggestions or any advice or anything? My advice to anyone who's interested about dipping their toe in the entertainment industry, who thinks it might be risky, do it. You are not at risk. You, you do not have to leave your existing job. You can start while you're still working, while you change nothing else about your life, you can start making movies you can start it. And this position is going to start you in the center of it all with the director, the actors, the producers, the screenwriter, and the editor from your first day. Just try it. You have nothing to lose and you're just going to have an amazing time. You know, if anything, even if you don't want to go into film and TV, eventually just get onto set and do this job. I'm telling you, it will be the time of your life. Wow. This sounds I'm really good. Go for it. Yeah. Just go for yeah. it. Yeah. Just oh my it. God. That sounds so exciting. Very exciting. I'm so glad you came on the show today to share all this and congratulations on all your accomplishments. This has been a wonderful journey for you. It sounds like, you know, I, I, 
can't even believe, I can't even believe it's actual work because it's so much fun, you know? So, um, yeah, I appreciate you saying I'm accomplished. I'm just, I'm just doing, you know, what comes naturally. It's just, it's, it's there. Um, and I, you know, it's just this hidden gem and I was lucky enough to be introduced to it, um, early in my film career. So I, you know, redirected straight into that instead of going the camera route. So, um, so thank you so much. And thank you for letting me talk about it because I really feel that people don't know about it. You know, I mean, it's just, they either don't know about it or they have a sort of a misunderstanding about it. So, yeah. Um, I did. so yeah, it's, um, it's great. Yeah, well, I told you I worked in the industry and I, I didn't even hear about that position. I didn't even know about it. So, you know, it's 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 news to me. And, you know, it sounds so exciting. I, I think the best thing is, is when you have a job and you love what you're doing, because people who have to wake up and they have to go to work and they're unhappy with the position they have. And they it's like a it's it's literally they're just dragging their feet because they hate their job. They hate the you know the people around them, whatever the case may be. But living when you have weekend, a, you know, living uh, for the weekend. Um, living for the weekend. But when you have a job that you love, it's like a whole different world, a whole different feeling. And and mentally, I think it's refreshing, you know. It's like you're enjoying your life. You're enjoying, you know, you know, your your journey, your destination, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually. It's like all, you know, beneficial for you. Well, it's so important to have variety, you know, a variety of experiences, a variety of locations, a variety of people in your life. When you do the same thing, when you drone in and out the same thing every single day, um, that is a recipe for depression, you know, and as much as I loved working at the Corps of Engineers, I was like, I'm in a cubicle you know, like this is, this is my day. It's, it's, it's eight to four every day in the same cubicle at the same computer. You know, I'm grateful for the um, opportunity for the experience, but this, I mean, it's, it, I almost feel like since setting foot, you know, in the film industry, I haven't worked a day. I just get paid to have fun and meet amazing people and, and make art, you know, and, and work closely with artists and get paid to travel. <laughs> it's just like, and, and, and also financially, it was so much more rewarding than my salary job, you know, there's yeah. money in the entertainment industry, turns out, you know, so, yeah. um, so, you know, of course, that can be challenging for people who are in a, a very oversaturated, you know, like, you know, of course, it's very competitive for actors, obviously, there's huge reward, but there's also, you know, a huge amount of competition. This role is like the most in demand job in film. And you get to meet all of the actors, and you get to meet all the producers and casting or, you know, whoever it is that you want to meet yeah. and relationships are what then, you know, can take you further. It can get your, get your acting reel in front of a producer or a director, you know, it can right. get your screenplay in front of a screenwriter. So relationships are everything in entertainment and yeah. this, you know, gives you all the relationships, you know? So if you impress them, which, you know, that's what I deliberately created a program that, um, you know, every single person walks away saying, they told me I was the best they've ever worked with and they can't wait, you know, they're inviting me back you know, once you create amazing relationships, it just snowballs. So it gets yeah. really good, really fast. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jennifer. This has been a wonderful experience. And, you know, I'll put all this information inside our description bar. So everybody who is interested can look up the workshop, your website, and how to contact you if they have any questions. Thank you so much for sharing all this information and congratulations, congratulations on everything. This has been a, a very exciting journey for you. And I think you've done a hell of a lot. So again, <laughs> congratulations. On all your 15 years. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Stacey. I hope to talk to you again. You've been so kind. I really appreciate it. Oh, definitely. I'd love to have you back on the show. This has been a great experience. And thank you so much for sharing all this. You got me excited. <laughs> oh, thank you, lady. Come on, bring it. Definitely, definitely. Call so me. <laughs> I will call you. Definitely. Yeah. So you have a great day and thank you so much. All right. Have a great one. You too. Bye-bye.